This episode of Six Five Guys is brought to you by Defiance Machine, defying tradition with innovation. Our Bros Rifles, precision on another level. JC Steel Targets, the industry leader in quality AR500 steel targets. Welcome to another episode of Six Five Guys. Hi, I'm Steve Lawrence. And I'm Ed Mobley. So we're responding to some of our audience feedback, and there was an interest in learning more about the disassembly, maintenance, and reassembly of dual triggers. Ed and I both have rifles with dual triggers, and to kind of placate your desire to go into OCD land, Right. Well, I just like I just like <laughs> taking things apart for the sake of taking things apart and learning how they work. And yeah, and learning how to work. Yeah. It's just I mean, when I get a new rifle, I'll take it apart because yeah. whether it needs it or not. Because for me, I just have this. Uh, I just like to know how things work. Yeah. So and. join us for this episode as we kind of dive into the details. Um, now we've got to put out our safe harbor statement, which is if you screw up your trigger, if you yeah disassemble your trigger, can't get it back together. Please don't come to us or blame us. And so this is not, you've been warned. And and this is uh, not authorized by Jewel. So this is, you know, we're not, yeah. this, we're just sharing our experience here. Yeah. Now, typically when you are doing trigger maintenance, most of them, um, because they may, although you can take apart Jewel triggers or, or other triggers, um, often what works is simply putting in lighter fluid or uh, you'd call Jewel to actually and yeah. ask about that, right? Yeah, so so they mentioned using charcoal lighter fluid, mm-hmm. and that's the the big. Uh, we'll we'll show you here in the in an inset here in the video. Those are those uh, big bottles of stuff that you can get to set off your your charcoal your charcoal yeah. grill, and then you just spray it out with yeah, you, uh, compressed you just, air. You just yeah, you, well you just leave it in there. You don't okay. even have to spray it out with uh, compressed air, and. Because a lot of folks just use regular lighter fluid, like mm-hmm. the Ronson lighter fluid, and that's what I was using before. But when I called them up to ask about disassembling the trigger, because the instructions say the trigger can be completely disassembled. And yep. that's what kind of spurred me on initially was like, oh, wow, is this okay? So I called them up. They said, yes, you can completely disassemble yep. it. And that's where he had made the comment. He said, when you're done, use charcoal lighter fluid now i believe there's a little bit more lubricity or some additive that's in there i don't don't know what's in there but if you put it on your fingers versus regular lighter fluid at least more of an oily yeah there's just some there's something so so there's definitely something to it and uh and it's cheaper yeah it's cheaper yeah you buy it by the big bottle and just you know when you're shooting just take the smaller just fill up a smaller bottle and Mm, and take it it along yeah take it along with you all right, so why don't we go ahead and just dive right in. Uh, we, you know, hopefully this won't be too long of a video, but there are a number of steps, and uh, Ed will take us through it. So what do we do first? Well, so just to familiarize with the audience, I'm a left-handed shooter, so I'm going to be disassembling a left-handed trigger. But I have a, a right-hand uh, trigger for comparison, and, and you'll see that in, in many respects they are mirror images of one another, but the area that you want to start to to disassemble is where you where the safety is and not the other side where if you don't if you have one that doesn't have a safety you don't want to start on the side that that has the the raised screw so again those are the main differences between the the left and and the right hand trigger and it looks upon casual inspection that a lot of the parts are interchangeable. Mm-hmm. Some are, some aren't. So let's first, um, before we get into it, what are the tools that would be required for this job? Just a, a couple of good jeweler screwdrivers. Uh, I use a bladed one right here to, to remove the retaining rings. And then uh, a, a, Phillips Phillips. Head, a Phillips head one. And again, get the one that fits or else you're just going to be stripping, stripping out the screws. Yep. And initially, the screws are going to be a little tight, so what you can do is you can just mount the screwdriver in a vise, and you can just 
go like this and push the trigger down and turn, turn yeah, the and, assembly. And, and turn it they're yeah. not lock tighted or anything like that but they're definitely tight enough that you're not going to be able to undo them just with with finger force now these of course have been pre-loosened for the purposes of this uh, demonstration so where to start there's a spring right here that is part of the the safety and so what you'll do is you'll move this part here up first yep and then this will this will come off then there's a retaining ring right here that you'll want to remove and by the way you can get replacement retaining rings at your local hardware store because you are probably going to lose one or you might they they do wear out right or or they well i've noticed that if you you can put them on the wrong way like if you don't have them perfectly aligned with the slot you mm -hmm. can stretch them out a bit and yeah. then they'll they'll they just they won't be tight yeah that they won't be tight so they're like 25 cents at the hardware store and they're they're one eighth inch at least in the bin that I got them out of, they were uh, one eighth inch. At our local uh, Ace Hardware store. Well, this was Johnson's. Yeah. Uh, Johnson's has a a fastener selection that's just incredible. Yeah. So what you do is you you remove the safety, and and what you'll want to do is is kind of line things up. To, so they're easy to reassemble. I, exactly. Yeah. Now these cross pins in the trigger are all different sizes depending on whether you have one that has the the bolt release if you have a trigger that doesn't have the bolt release these pins right here are of a of a different size and so if you want to you can move the bolt release between triggers by simply taking this and the two pins along with you be, between right. the the trigger which which I I have done so now what you'll want to do is remove these other cross pins. And I'm actually going to put on my reading glasses here. I was wondering why everything was so blurry. Have you ever had to uh, chase down these little cross pins? Oh, yes. <laughs> I even chased one down in the parking lot of Johnson's Heart. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and let me say, I did not find it because there are many You specs. had to go back in or did you buy some there, extras? No, no, when I went in, because I took uh, one off to go into the hardware store. Right. And yeah. the first one I lost, and so I pulled another one off in the parking lot. And so here I was disassembling my trigger in the parking lot. Okay. So once you get those off, you can... You press can the push pins in. Out. Yeah, you can you can uh, press the pins out. Now you're going from left to right. Yeah, it's going to be opposite. Yeah, it's going to be opposite on the the right handed on the, the right handed trigger. Yeah, so everything's a mirror image. Yeah, so so you pull these out, and this this is a, a handy way to to kind of orient yeah. them if you do have the safety release, and then you've got the the one right here for the for the trigger. So now I I count a total of five. So Maybe far, one, two, three. Oh, so these aren't okay. Those are just, yeah. That, that okay, just that just rides it. right over it. So so once you have these out, you'll see things start to, to get a little loose here. Now, what precautions uh, at this point do folks need to make? Um, do not lose the parts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, and just be method. You know, use some mythology to. Keep the orientation of the parts, you know, as you're disassembling, as you had mentioned, it helps to know in relationship where these parts go when you're putting it back together. Yeah, and the reason why I originally disassembled the trigger was, number one, it was curiosity, but number two, some tarry, gummy substance got in there Wait. after a match that I ran it through the ultrasonic cleaner multiple times and it just it just wouldn't come out and so fortunately it, it it can be disassembled by the end user yeah so we'll pull this well out. the other interesting thing is i know you had mentioned you had looked online and you know 
typically you would find almost any type of information um, you're interested in on YouTube or on the internet, and there was very limited information on this procedure, right? There were some diagrams available, but not sort maybe, of a how-to guide. Maybe because most YouTubers have good attorneys. <laughs> <laughs> I tell them you don't want to show you don't want to show somebody how to do this, but but when you when you take it apart, you'll see that it's a it's a pretty interesting design. I mean, it looks pretty robust. I mean, I know people like to some people like to criticize jewel triggers as being weak or, or mm -hmm. whatnot, but I mean this this looks pretty simple, pretty robust. And what you'll want to do again is you take it apart, just keep things oriented. But even if, if you disorient them, you'll be able to figure it out. Like on this piece right here, there's a little beveled edge here that, that lines up here. And it can really only be assembled correctly. And then this spacer right here sometimes yeah. can just fall out before you even disassemble it. So just remember the spacer. And then... This right here is the is part of the safety mechanism. Now, in a right-hand trigger, it's going to be flipped. Let's move your hands out of the way. Just get a right good there. shot. So, um, once this is fully, and then here's the here's a spring, the steer bar yeah. spring, and then of course there's one more of these little cross pins right here. Once and it's fully disassembled, looking, um, you see me looking up because I'm looking at the monitor yeah. on our smaller camera. Once it's fully disassembled, what are your recommendations in terms of maintenance? Things that you would want to inspect and, and perhaps clean. Well, then you can just—I mean, you can just really clean it. I mean, okay. I, I put all the parts in separately, and and in my particular case, the the gummy stuff had just gotten right on the sear, so so I clean that up, and of course this part here further further disassembles here. So here here you have all the parts and, and once it's all disassembled you'll see it's all pretty basic. I mean these these screw in here on the other side, but there's there's no need to to undo these. Yep. And then of course you have the, the sear bar that goes right onto this side. Now from what I've seen on a right handed trigger this little post that the sear bar goes onto from inspecting the trigger externally, not actually taking a right-handed trigger apart. The right because hand, I, I wouldn't let Ed do that to my trigger. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't even ask. I should have just done it while you weren't looking. This little post would be on here, in which case you could just assemble everything. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier. So the left-hand triggers are going to be a little trickier to assemble because you're going to have the sear bar on this half and you're going to have to kind of hold it over here and, and get it together. But that I'll, is that is interesting. But I'll I'll show you show you uh Okay, well let's let's go do the, let's do the step by step um in putting this back together. Where, where do we start? So I start I start with the posts, the posts yep. because the, you know, that's what everything hinges off of. And again, you don't you don't need to lube this or oil it up or, or do anything like that. You'll you'll uh, squirt it down with the, the fluid. And of course, if you've got this guy right here, this bolt release, you want to make sure that you get that in there like that. Get those pins in there. And then you'll put it down. You'll put the spacer right there. Then you have This, this safety that goes right and, and by the way guys this, <clears throat> we uh, we will as part of this uh, video um, and, and the write-up have a diagram Pictures. available as well as uh, images now when you put the the trigger back on you've got this little spring that sticks out that that helps regulate the the weight it's on yep. the other part of this allen screw so when you put this in you just need to kind of tilt it down like that so that spring just gets right right behind this post right there okay you got that in there and what you'll do is 
you can put the spring in. You can put that spring in. And again, there's no particular order to to put it in. I mean, I've probably disassembled this ten times, and each time you can do it slightly differently. And a little bit faster each time, I would imagine. And a little, yeah, a little bit faster. Now you'll you'll want to make sure. This is why it's handy to have the the diagram. You want to make sure that this gets in there, and this is aligned. The these sear surfaces are aligned. Yep. But even if you forget to do that, it just flat out won't work. I mean, it's not like it's going to be marginal. So if if you get it back together and it's not working properly, it's because those weren't seated right. in, in the right relationship to each other. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Now this is this is the the tricky part where you really need to be dexterous. Is like like I said before, from looking at the right hand triggers, this little post right here is actually on this side, so you'd be able to put this thing in, and it it's just so yeah. easy. So so folks with right-handed triggers are going to have an easier easy. time getting yeah. it back together. I mean, this is just another illustration of how you're left-handed. <laughs> I mean, You're out of luck. Every, yeah, I mean, <laughs> everything in life conspires against us left-handed people. So here's here's the tricky part. So you're going to move this surface down, and and you can see little wear areas, so you'll you'll know exactly where it needs to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind compress of free, the spring with that bar. Yeah, kind of freehand it like this okay and line up the hole so you can get that pin through it exactly like that and this is where dexterity and luck dexterity and doing this many many times and then as you do that the posts will start lining up and again, you don't want to force anything. There's there's no need to force it. I mean, the tolerances are are pretty tight, so don't don't go banging on it. And I'm just kind of shuffling this around. I'm going to move this up and and continue just to press the the bars through there or the pins, the cross pins through there. Okay. And now. You can see everything. All the pins are through. Yeah, all the pins are through. Everything is together. And what do we do next? The screws. So yeah, so now you'll you'll want to do the screws. And once you get the screws in, it's like you're home free because then you just have the uh, safety and the have spring. The safety in the spring. And they don't give a torque spec for these screws, but for some people who want a torque spec. It's it's definitely less than 10 inch pounds. What are your thoughts in terms of use of uh, any type of a light Loctite product? I wouldn't. It's not necessary. Okay. I mean, they 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 didn't do it from the factory, and it would really complicate disassembling it, and it would probably migrate, you know, while it's wet. Yep. So I I, I wouldn't recommend it. So. I'm just kind of doing a visual check here before I fully tighten down the screws. But if you've worked on a carburetor or something with, with fine screws, I mean, you'll know when it's tight, but you're not going to strip it. It's just, it's sort of an acquired feel. Yep. But I'll bet you could even get replacement screws even if you did mess it up. Because even if you broke a screw off in here, you could always unscrew it from the back end here, yeah. and, yep. and, okay. and you, you'd get a bit of a mulligan there. So now we do uh, the cross pins? Yeah, so now we do the cross pins. And again, you'll want to do the two for the trigger. And what you'll want to do is make sure there's a slot in there, and it doesn't take a lot of force. It should just take your fingernail like that. Yep. If you're, if it's taking more force than just your fingernail, it's probably not lined up. Yeah, it's not lined up. It's, it's, 
like this particular pin here, you can see how the larger part is, is just proud of the surface there. And if you just really try and mash hard on this, on these retaining rings, it'll stretch out. So again, I just make sure that they're lined up. And again, just use my fingernail. You just hear like a little click. And this is why it's good to have extra, because if you mess it up, just put the, put another one on there. Now they're not stainless, but they still function the same. They, they still function the same. Now, if you want to have the stainless ones, I'm sure you could call up Jewel and say that uh, you need some. Don't tell them you watched our video, though. Actually, I, I, but I'm, unless just, you I'm, have, I'm kidding around. Unless you have a translucent uh, stock no, or a bottom metal, nobody's yeah, going to yeah, see yeah, it no, anyways. Yeah, no, nobody's <laughs> going to notice. No, I'm, I'm just kind of kidding around about Jewel. I don't think they'd have any issue with us doing this tutorial. And then you do the final clip right here. Again, just making sure. Again, you hear that little click. Yep. I mean, it's, it's yep. not much at all. And then we have the spring. And again, to, to do the spring, you put you put this part on first. And and one one thing to mention is this post right here has a slot with an even deeper groove than make, this one. So make sure the spring's fully seated in there? Well, no, just make sure you don't mix up the pins. Oh, gotcha. And, and I'm just saying is all the pins have the same diameter groove except for this one. Yep. And so these two right here, I originally mixed it up and I was like, well, wait a second. Why is it so hard? Well, I mean, why does this just not stay on there? And why, I'm have, why am I having such a hard time? And then I just examined them uh, mm -hmm. more closely. So you get that on there and then you you take this part right here and let's make sure we get a good visual of that yeah i'm looking up at the monitor here making sure that it's in there and and again you'll you'll just hear again nice little clicks as as that goes right in there then you'll you'll want to function test it, and you can do that easily. We can see that the the safety works right here. Then what you do is you press down on the sear bar, and you pull the trigger, and you can okay it doesn't go down, goes down. Yep. Do the safety same thing, doesn't go down. Everything works. Mm -hmm. Of course you're you're going to want to. Put it in your rifle and, and do, do the, the same, same function test, test yes, yeah. before you you actually go live yeah. with the rifle. Well, guys, hopefully you found you know this tutorial, uh, this walkthrough of the disassembly maintenance and reassembly of the dual trigger, informative, helpful, and interesting. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you like this video, be, be sure to share it with your friends on Facebook. Give it a thumbs up uh, on YouTube, which is right below this screen. And um, make, make sure you also check out our Twitter feed, which we're updating. But particularly for this episode, check out the article on the website, because that's where we're going to have lots of still photos. And essentially, it's, it's going to be a, a detailed step-by-step -step tutorial on, on how to do this. Mm -hmm. but, but we do that with, with all of our videos. But yep. for this video particularly, check out the write-up on www.65guys.com. Remember, guys, life's an adventure. Stay on target.